Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. What we're going to look at in this video is we're going to talk a little bit about Wi-Fi and why it can be slow and why you're not getting gigabit wireless, right? So, um, you know, I get this a lot. You know, my Wi-Fi is slow. Why is my Wi-Fi slow? Well, Wi-Fi design is a lot of physics and a little bit of art. So before we can diagnose why your Wi-Fi is slow, uh, let's talk about what Wi-Fi is and what Wi-Fi isn't. First of all, Wi-Fi isn't magic. As much as it seems like it is, it really is radio waves moving through the air. So we have to deal with everything that can impede that movement. The other thing that you have to remember is that Wi-Fi is a half duplex communication. You also need to remember that the numbers that you see on the packages or the data transfer rates that you see on marketing materials aren't speeds that your Wi-Fi client will see. That's an overall aggregate, and that number usually isn't accurate. Can someone do a YouTube video where a single client gets gigabit wireless? Sure they can, but once you design a system and you have more than one client on it, good luck getting those speeds consistently. So one client, yeah. An entire network, I mean, example here, my network has 50 to 60 wireless devices. They're not going to get gigabit. So maybe future technology, but current technology, we're not going to see that. So why, you ask, will we not see these speeds? Well, Wi-Fi is a shared medium, which means that multiple devices are using the same radio frequency to send and receive data data which almost seems simultaneous. When dealing with access points, we have to take airtime into consideration. And airtime is the amount of, uh, amount of time that the a AP has uh, for devices to send and receive data. So think of that as the overall amount of time that an AP can divide amongst clients, right? So airtime itself can become a bottleneck if not configured correctly, because devices are competing and trying to access the medium and can sometimes hog the medium, right? So certain devices may take up more airtime than others, which can lead to congestion and slower speeds for everyone on the Wi-Fi network. An example of this would be one client on the network streaming large videos or downloading large files. This can take up a lot of airtime, making it harder for other devices to get access to the medium. To alleviate some of those issues, what you can do is enable quality of service and prioritize certain traffic like voice, remote desktop, file sharing, over things like video, you know, video coming from the internet, over gaming, and things like that. You can also enable airtime fairness. What airtime fairness does is it tells the access point to divide up the airtime equally among the clients. When you do this, it will put a hard limit on the number of devices that can connect to that access point. Or if you enable it on all access points, it will limit how many devices clients can connect to your Wi-Fi network. Um, with, ha with Wi-Fi having a device such as a phone or a laptop just connected to the network, it chews up airtime. So even though you're not surfing the internet or transferring files on the network, the access point and client are still exchanging uh, management frames. And these management frames include authentication and association messages. So even though these are small amounts of data and they're not a constant barrage, if you have a lot of clients, the management frames can add up. Older devices also that only have a single antenna and can't take advantage of MIMO, uh, it takes more resources for the access point to send data to that because it's got to concentrate it uh, basically on one antenna instead of being able to use multiple antennas to do this. So older devices that can't use newer standards either, such as AC or Wi-Fi 5 or a AX, Wi-Fi 6, or Wi-Fi 6E can also take up more resources. One thing that you really want to watch out for is that super old clients that use 802.11b, if you allow them to connect to your network, it will then bring the speed down for everybody down to that 802.11b. So hopefully you don't let 802.11b clients connect. Once you've covered these, these kind of basic things, there are other things that we see uh, that I'll talk about real quick that causes Wi-Fi to be slow or not work the way that we think it should. Remember, 
outdated equipment. We just talked about that. These other reasons are probably in our top five that we see uh, that cause poor performance. So designers that are using, and I'm talking about Wi-Fi network designers, that are using long-range access points to boost the signal is another thing that we see trouble with. These long-range access points can push the Wi-Fi signal out a few extra hundred feet, but that doesn't mean that these devices have enough power to transmit back. So you get um, some weird things happening where, hey, I've got five bars, but I can't talk back. It's called near-far. It happens in a lot of RF situations. We also uh, see interference of all types from people using 40 megahertz. Don't do this. 2.4 gigahertz channels to people in their neighbors running all access points on the same channels. Um, and Wi-Fi 6 does have some protection built in for this called BSS coloring. But a lot of times we're not running Wi-Fi 6. And so having all these access points close together and on the same channels causes issue. Other devices like cordless phones, baby monitors, microwave microwaves or anything else that communicates or emits EMF, uh, electromagnetic, electromagnetic interference at 2.4 or 5 gigahertz can cause issues. Physical setup is also very important. So walls, mirrors, floors, trees, plants, people, basically everything around you Everything around a device will absorb, reflect, or refract the signal and causes it to act in different ways. This can cause issues. Other things we've seen people try to do is string together simple routers like a Linksys or a D-Link access point that they just pick up at Best Buy or Walmart and try to create entire wireless networks. Routers like this are not designed to be a cohesive wireless network. And so the routers aren't talking to each other the way the access points can talk to each other. And they don't care about doing a proper handoff. Using a well-designed wireless system like those by Grandstream, Ubiquiti, Cambium, and others will ensure the access points are able to be part of a larger system and to make sure that clients are handled appropriately. So you have to take into consider consideration all of these things. I mean, even having the power set too high on an access point and being next to it can cause problems. There's a lot to it. It's not as easy as just taking it out of the box and turning it on. So if you've got questions, and I hope, I hope that listening to this, you, you have some questions, you have additional, excuse me, additional questions, put them down in the comments. Uh, you can reach out at willyhow.com, click hire us, contact us, send your Wi-Fi design questions over, and we'll see if we can get those figured out. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below. If you'd like to support the channel by using our affiliate links or becoming a patron, those links are down below, along with the link to our website where you can hire us to check out your wireless network and see if we can help you improve upon the design. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.